Okay, here we are, second day of early antlerless season in Lenaway County, Michigan. I just got done mowing my lawn. You might notice um, I'm not worried about scent control at all. I don't have to worry about it. I got a nice west wind here. It's going to be blowing right over to my neighbor's yard. My blind is situated 151 yards from the neighbor's uh, house, so I don't have to ask permission to shoot back here. But a lot of people accuse some of us of this extreme scent control and say we don't need it. Well, you know, they're exactly right. You don't need it under a lot of conditions. But you do need it under conditions where you're going to be repeatedly hunting the same spot over and over again on a small property. That's where the extreme scent control really comes into play. I don't have to worry about this. I'm probably only going to hunt this stand once, maybe twice, during the entire three-month Michigan season. So I don't have to worry about burning it out. And my scent is blowing towards the west in my neighbor's yard, so I don't have to worry about them smelling me. Even if there's a little swirling wind coming down the hill, uh, it's not going to be an issue because they expect to smell me up at the house anyway. So I'm using my own dwelling as kind of a uh, scent control situation. They don't mind getting a whiff of a human when they know they're standing 150 yards from a human's house. So let's get ready to hunt. So here's the setup. There's my house right there. And these are beans and sugar beets that I planted in the spring. They're doing really super well. And I just opened up this fence a couple weeks ago. They've been pretty staying, pretty much staying out of it because it's so close to the house. But now that I've opened up this fence, you're seeing a lot more browsing in here. Because now the fawns can get in with the moms. Moms won't go in there with a four foot fence because their fawns can't jump in with them. I brought my gear back here a few minutes ago and right there is the shack I'll be hunting from. I just cleared out about a oh, massive number of, of paper wasps in there. I got a nice plot of beans and brassicas down there, down below, one off to the left, one right in front of me. I don't know how good the one in front of me is doing, but typically some deer will come in here in the evening in September. Okay, there's a buck feeding down in that food pot right there. Looks like a young one. This is the plot that I shot into. This is where I was right up there. Okay, we got some blood right here. I think I hit her pretty good. She went right back through here, I think. So I'm gonna walk around because I can't short time. <laughs> I'm going to have to go up to the house and get some long pants because I know this area is just riddled with poison ivy. There's some right there. I'm walking in it with my sandals. Okay, I'm back again. I watched the video so I could see exactly where she came through. And it was right here. And 
there's blood right there. I don't think she went very far. I think I hammered her. There's some more blood there. Blood. Blood. I'm just going to walk ahead here a little bit. I don't see any blood, but she was running on a beeline in this direction. So, yeah, there she is right there. Ouch, 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 ouch. Multiflora rolls. Okay. 45 minutes of hunting, and I got me a nice, fat, healthy-looking doe. Do you need extreme scent control to kill a deer? No way. But if you hunt like this, don't plan on seeing many deer for 7 to 10 days afterwards from this stand. If you are going to hunt a small property from the same stand repeatedly, you will need to use extreme scent control to be successful.